Hi and welcome to another video about handpans. My name is Sylvan Pallier. I've been playing handpans for over 10 years and I am really passionate about this art form. Recently, I had the incredible pleasure to visit Sean Beaver of Symphonic Steel. Sean's working on something really special that I want to tell you about, so check it out. So, Sean, we are here in your workshop. This is where the Iskra uh, is made. Your company, Symphonic Steel, yep. uh, you just gave us a tour. Um, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is, um, people will hear the sound of the hong, the original hong, mm -hmm. and they will feel like it sounds different from other handpins. And it is my understanding that with the Iskra, you've recreated that original sound. Um, what was your motive behind that and um, how do you actually achieve that original sound? Uh, the motive, uh, number one, is that it really wasn't offered anymore. There's you know, a lot of hand pans out there and it's almost gotten sort of generic uh, mm -hmm. and not necessarily unique. And there's still people out there that want uh, an instrument that's like the hog. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I love the sound of the hong. You know, of course, I, I built too. steel pans and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm used to a unique timbre. Mm -hmm. And the hong has that unique timbre um, that's distinctly different than basically all the hand pans you can buy nowadays. So that's kind of why I wanted to go back to it. And since pan art has since basically moved on from mm -hmm. the hong, uh, I figured I would sort of maybe take some of their ideas and stuff that they released on, on building the instrument and make a few little changes here and there tuning wise uh, mm -hmm. to give it my own little flavor but ultimately I wanted to get that timbre mm -hmm. um, because I feel it's important that's really what kind of caused the big interest uh, yeah. in, in the instruments was you know the hong was really the, the one that started it all so so how do you actually get that sound um, so it comes down to uh, well several factors uh, number one mm -hmm. proper heat treatment of the the proper steel um, and then beyond that, it's, it's primarily building and tuning methods. Mm -hmm. So there are basically some things that I don't do that a lot of hand pan makers do do as far as hammer shaping. Um, it's really ultimately note structure. Okay. And yeah, the tuning style is vastly different um, than uh, a typical steel pan tun tuning technique that a lot of hand pan makers use nowadays. So we're in this space, um, obviously you're here in this workshop day in and day out. Uh, what's a typical week looking like for you? Uh, let's see, so a typical week, um, I mean, I'll do various parts of the process on any given day, generally. Um, most recently, over the last week, an uh, employee and myself have basically just been making more shells. Yeah. So, you know, every couple of months, I need more shells to build, uh, you know, the instruments out of. Mm -hmm. So they start from flat sheets of steel, they have to be cut out before they go into my hydroforming machine. They get hydroformed, and you know that's using around 80 tons of force. You know, I have to do the math, so I hydroform them, and that's what I've been doing this last week. Um, but typical week, I'll, I'll generally go through the entire process, start to finish. But basically, it's lots of hammering. Yeah, <laughs> lots yeah. of hammering and lots of tuning. That's awesome. What do you do when you're not hammering steel? I see a huge <laughs> banner on the wall. Yeah, I'm um, a big, big fan of hockey. So I play a lot of hockey, generally anywhere from three to five times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so it keeps me active and, you know, on hot summer days like this, it's nice to go into an ice rink as well. Yeah. And you're playing tonight, right? I am playing tonight, yes. Wow. Yeah. Do I understand we might see how a handpan is made? Yeah, we can, uh, I think we can go build one. I've never written any of these down. You think I would after some point in time? It's, it's all in the head. Thanks. 
That's crazy. <laughs> Inside, so now I got fingerprints on it. Yep. It's rough too. The um, next step would be gluing. After the glue is sufficiently cured, uh, there'll be one round of fine tuning that it's going to sit for a week or so, and then uh, I'll do another round of fine tuning on it because it'll drift in that time of a yeah. week uh, as far as tuning is concerned. Um, generally, it's going to go sharp. And then, so I'll give it another fine tuning, give it another week of, of rest, and then at that point, uh, basically see if it's stable. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the interactions with Sean, who was so generous with his time showing us around the workshop. I personally picked up my Iskra handpan, and it's one of the finest instruments I've ever played. If Sean's intentional handpan making approach resonates with you, check out his website, and I'll put a link in the description. I'm gonna be releasing a lot of videos about this new Iskra. So be sure to subscribe if you want to stay tuned and hear that. And finally, I'm going to wrap up this video with a clip of my brand new Iskra handband.